Hey, what's going on? Eric Cortina here. So today we're going to talk about annealing. This video right here, I told you that if it hit uh, 3,000 likes, um, I was going to make an annealing video for you guys. Well, you guys killed it. It's got over 5,000 likes, I think, last time I checked. So today we're going to talk about that. All right, so the first thing we need to discuss is what brass is. So brass is an alloy, which is copper and zinc mixed together. Uh, that's the short explanation of it. <laughs> you can, I mean, you can look a lot more in depth uh, as to what it is and what percentage this, that, and the other. But you know, that's the short of it. Okay. Now annealing acts different in different metals. Okay, it's not the same all the way across the board. Annealing. What is annealing? Uh, according to the machinery machinery's handbook. 29th version annealing is to improve or restore ductility for subsequent forming operations or to eliminate the residual stresses and microstructural effects of cold working okay so brass when we size the brass uh, so we fire it right and then we size it back that's cold working every time we move it it cold it it work hardens that's what it's called okay it gets a little bit harder a little bit harder which makes it more brittle which is the reason that it'll break at some point so if it gets harder every time you work it okay so your neck tension is going to be <laughs> uh that just means that your neck tension is going to be different every time okay <laughs> so your neck tension is going to be different every time you uh load your brass if you don't anneal it so when you anneal it you kind of bring it back to the original uh um, let's just call it stress level or hardness level okay uh that's what we're trying to do we're trying to maintain a consistent neck tension for all the brass and for the life of that brass this will ensure that you get consistency in your reloads and then they perform as expected work hardening i can explain it or i can just show it to you let me go show it to you all right, so here's a piece of brass that I sectioned just so you guys can see. Plus, it's going to make it a lot easier to bend. So if I take a pair of pliers and grab the neck, I can bend it. Nothing happens. I can bend it back. Nothing happens. However, if I grab it and bend it back and forth a few times like this, it breaks off. Okay? The reason for that is because they work hardened. Every time I moved it, it got a little bit harder. And then at some point it just breaks off. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Okay. Okay, bend it, no problem. Bend it back, no problem. But now it's a little bit harder than it was the first time. Okay, and then do it again, no problem, again. And then you just keep doing that and it's work hardening and you guys can see it's, there it is it broke off so this is what happens to brass if i do this and this and then anneal it i can do it all over again there and there and it'll it just never gonna break because i'm restoring it to the first time that i did it okay so of course, i know this is my third time but let's just assume this is the first time there and there i anneal it I call it the reset button. <laughs> it goes back to the to the beginning with no stress, and then you can keep working at brass, and it's not going to break because there's no it, it didn't it's no longer hard. It you got it annealed back to the original hardness, which it didn't break. Okay, so this is just going. Uh, this is just ensuring consistency in your reloads because you know, like the first few times it didn't break, but at some point, like that. It just breaks off, right? See that? So, this is what happens to your brass. Okay, so now let's anneal it. All right, so annealing is where the magic happens and the controversy and all that good stuff that you read online. Okay, I'm going to show you the way I do it. Okay, <laughs> that's a disclaimer. Um, I'm going to do it the way I do it, I'm going to show you the way I do it and it works for me okay so it's extremely simple uh i've showed it before and the comments never <laughs> how can i put this nicely 
they they never disappoint there's always somebody in the comments saying that i'm doing it wrong um but anyway again i'm going to show you how i do it all right so one of the questions that i had on the last video that i did where i showed the kneeler is why do i have different bottles okay well that's just because i ran out when i when i start my uh my barbecue pit oftentimes i'll take this bottle and i go start it right so of course i ran out and then one day I was a kneading brass and I only had one bottle. So I had that one on a heater. So I took it off and put it on and that's why I have different bottles. Okay. Uh, I have bought more since then and that's them back there. Now, uh, map gas versus propane. It doesn't matter. Map gas is not really map gas anymore. So it's not as hot as it used to be. So I use that one just because it's a little bit faster. That's it. Okay. So that's the, that's the technical explanation of why I have two different bottles. All right, so the first thing I did is dim the lights. You probably can't tell because the camera compensates, but uh, I dim the lights. I'm gonna start the flames. Okay. And the way I like to set it up is get it to the point where the, the inner flame almost touches the brass about right there okay and this one over here on the right side it's not looks like it's dirty but whatever okay so the lights are dimmed here we go Let's do one I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see a little better okay And it has a knob over here on, the, on this left side for time. So I'm gonna sit here and the minute it turns orange about right there, it needs to move out of the way. Okay, let's do another one. I'm gonna turn off the lights. Uh, needs a little more. I'm gonna do another one. Okay, here we go. Right there. Right, uh, a little more. Do one more. I like the necks and the, you know, the neck to turn orange slightly. Do another one. Yep, about right there. I don't know if you could tell, but it turned slight orange before it got out of the way. Let me turn the lights back on. All right, I'm gonna have to keep the lights dim just so you guys can see, but as far as where to aim the flame, I try to aim the flame right where the shoulder meets the, uh, the neck. Okay, give this one a little more, about right there. Now, annealing has nothing to do with color of the brass, okay? So don't try to match the what Lapua does. That has nothing to do with it. Right there, perfect. Okay, so that's how I anneal my brass. Now, how hot is too hot? Well, you can over anneal the brass, but we're gonna do a little experiment here a little bit. All right, so I got 10 pieces of brass already annealed, okay? We're gonna take some of these, of course they're hot, like this one. I didn't, I didn't knock the primers out. That one, that one. Can you guys see, still have the primers? So let me zoom out so you guys can see. Okay, so these three pieces of brass, I'm going to put a red Sharpie mark on the uh, primer okay we're gonna do three of them okay uh let's do one more let's do four okay and what we're gonna do we're going to over anneal this breast okay so i'm gonna set the machine 
It was at six seconds. I'm gonna set it to 10 seconds, which is the maximum. It'll go. All right, there's one. That's 10 seconds instead of six. Okay, there it is, and it's just gonna sit there. Look how, look how red that is. Okay, we're gonna do another one. And uh, we're gonna do those four. Remember, we put Sharpie marks on the back. Put this tray under here so I can catch them. But I mean, look how red that brass is turning. All right, so just by looking at it, can you tell which brass is the brass that got the 10 seconds? Okay, so I'm gonna tip them over, these four, so you guys can see, sorry, that these are the ones that are red, okay? All the others, I knocked one over, but this one doesn't even have a primer, and the others don't have the red marks, okay? Now, we're gonna see if we damage these four by annealing them too much. How we're gonna find out? Well, we're gonna use the hydro press. We're gonna seed some uh, freedom seeds and see uh, see if the uh, seeding pressure is different. All right, so before we do the test, let's uh, read this article right quick and talk about how much temperature it takes to anneal the brass, okay? If cold work, brass is heated to 450 to 600 degrees Celsius. The hardening achieved can be removed again depending on, on its composition. At this temperature, the crystals in the metal microstructure can rearrange if the heating remains if the heating remains within the range of 300 to 400 degrees celsius depending on the temperature different degrees of hardness can be achieved if the alloy is heated to uh, 250 to 300 degrees celsius it can be relaxed to such an extent that at least no more stress corrosion cracking can occur so 460 celsius the uh, the hardening can be removed 450 uh, to or 300 to 450 um, different degrees of hardness can be achieved and 250 to 300 it can be relaxed to such extent that at least no more stress corrosion cracking can occur so uh, looks like 250 to 300 this is Celsius this is just to keep it from cracking okay uh, 450 to 600 the uh, hardening is completely removed so that looks like it's too much heat and for 300 to 450 uh, different degrees of hardness can be achieved so uh, it looks like we want to be you know they always say to be around 750 degrees and i think they're talking about fahrenheit so uh, anyway that's what this article says and uh, like i said i i'm not very good at all this scientific stuff so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna seat them and I mean you guys saw how I annealed it now I'm gonna seat them all and uh, see if it makes a difference between the way I do it and pretty much overdoing it and see if we actually overdid it if we didn't then you know I mean it's real simple to stay inside that window uh, which is kind of how how I operate I find the <laughs> the most foolproof way for me to get it to work and yet not have any issues so all right let's find out if we ruin some brass all right moment of truth so here's one that was annealed the way normally anneal brass here we go Okay, I look, what am I doing here? Okay, that looked like, okay, that one was inconclusive. Let me get out of the way, because I'm trying to stand behind the camera. That's hard to do. Okay. Okay, well, that's really hard. <laughs> this die that I used is not the typical die. But anyway, we can see it's got some hardness. Uh, it goes in and it kind of builds up 
all the way up to what what are we doing 80 okay it builds up builds up okay so about 60 this one that was the max that it reached and i haven't been showing you but these are all the brass that uh that got a kneel normally okay so 60 was the max all right let's do another one you get the idea so now this is the brass that we supposedly over annealed okay so let's do the first one Sixty. Let's do another one. You guys see that? Yep. Sixty. If anything, these are more consistent. Forty. So they're a little bit lighter neck tension. And the last one. Okay. That was about 50. So the tension is lighter, but we do have tension. Okay. All right, so there you have it. Uh, as you saw, even annealing the brass for 10 seconds with dual torches, one of which was a map uh, gas, we did not ruin the brass. So there is a pretty large window between annealing and over annealing, okay? Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's fairly, fairly simple to anneal just based on that very large window that we have between, you know, annealing and over annealing. Um, Having seen this test, you know, I'm 100% confident in what I'm doing, just letting that brass glow. And the reason I do that is because it's really easy when to see the brass start to glow and then move it out of the way. That, to me, that is a very easy way to, to time it. Uh, however, if you go t a little bit too much, it, it ain't, as you saw, it ain't gonna matter. And you can do this test yourself, okay? That's the beauty of it. Uh, take some brass. This is all old brass. That's why it's kind of all over the place. That brass has been there for over a year. But uh, the point is we have neck tension and we, even though we got it super red, uh, most of you probably thought that brass was gone, right? <laughs> but it wasn't. If you are on Patreon, then this is what I got coming that I'm going to test next. So I have a amp annealer. And as you guys saw, the way I test stuff is by seeing the actual implementation of the test, okay? So I, I don't like reading articles and reading this, reading that. I just go out and try it for myself. So the test that I'm gonna do for Patreon is I'm going to anneal brass with my flame annealer, and then I'm gonna anneal brass with the app annealer and I'm gonna shoot them at a thousand yards, see if it makes a difference. If I can see a difference, then I'm switching for sure. Uh, so anyway, that's the test that I'm gonna do. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope uh, your money was well spent with your likes. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a lot of likes as well. And uh, don't forget, I'm gonna link that article in the description below so you guys can go read it. It's pretty short. But uh, it kind of gives you a pretty quick uh, info in, on uh, what brass is and the uh, annealing temperatures and all that good stuff. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Keep them centered.